Let's do this long rambling style where I haven't seen anything ahead of time. TVP. TVP is the one matchup where you should win like all of your games if you do it perfectly because there's just nothing Protoss can do against a good one base. <laughs> so there should always be something we can find that could have been done better in a game that you lose like this one. So this is uh, Tom Taran. He's now in Gold League. He started in Silver and wanted to get promoted and he did now. So good job Tom. You're awesome. Uh, when was this gas taken? It might have been a little early. I don't think it matters. I do not think it matters, Master Chief. Um, you don't... Uh, we, I guess on a map this big, it's totally fine to scout this early. But in general, uh, you don't really need to scout until your racks is done if you only have two places to scout. Uh, because zealots aren't fast enough to kill your, your probe. Protosses don't wall in. And stalkers don't come out until 4 minutes and 20 seconds. So, you know, you've got plenty of time. But on a map like this, you do need to scout this early, because look, you're not even going to make it by 4 minutes and 20 seconds, even though you scouted super early. So that's totally cool, man. Totally cool. Uh, really early factory bunker at 4 minutes. Beautiful! 4 minute bunker, very important, because like I said, stalker comes out at 420, and he's going to walk across the field. 40 seconds later, he's going to be at your base. And... So you need to start the bunker at 4 minutes so that it's done at 440. Alright, so you see three gateways, no Chrono Boost saved up. Chrono Boost being used on Cybernetic Score. This means a one base. Uh, I don't know if you've, you've if you've read that how to scout Protoss thing, but in general, uh, it looks like this guy wants to expand around 7 minutes would be my guess. Um, but maybe not expanding at all. We shall see. Uh, so three gateways this before the expo is dumping a lot of a lot of minerals that you would otherwise want to save up and spend on a nexus. He's got a ton of minerals and gas though, so this guy might be so bad that it's not even worth trying to figure out what he's doing by scouting. Because look how much money he's got saved up. He's never going to be able to spend all that. This is going to go over here and anyway, let's worry less about your opponent and more about your your Tom Terranitude. This guy's just idle and sitting there. I don't know about that seems wrong. Anyway, six minutes, big benchmark, 24 workers. If you don't hit 24 workers at six minutes, you should have 23 because you lost a worker. Then you're in big trouble. And you are in big trouble. This this is idle and you're one worker short. So that's not huge, but it's a little bit. A little bit. You're, you're behind by about 17 seconds on worker production at this point. And I'm sure that just came from... I don't think you supply blocked. Da -da 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 -da, super fast. Right, so oh, that was big. Why'd you do that? Okay, get a sixteen orbital, not a fifteen orbital, because you saw uh, you just wasted probably five in-game seconds waiting for the racks to finish and get the orbital when you could have. I mean, an SCV is only seventeen seconds to build, so I mean that's it's it's pretty obvious. It's better to get the orbital. Uh, 12 seconds late than it is to skip 5 seconds of SCV production. Watching this thing, watching this thing. So yeah, you never supply blocked yourself and you kept up on workers uh, pretty good. I think you're just one worker behind because of when you built your orbital. That's weird. That's weird, bro. So you've got a starport already. Uh, most Protoss' attacks are going to come at either 6 minutes if he's going to cut Econ and like all in. Uh, or seven minutes if he's going to do a normal pretty quick attack, or eight minutes if he's going to do a normal not so quick attack. This guy did get a, a late expo. I expected a seven minute expo. It was a six minute expo. Um, he's got way too much gas. Very weird. He's going to go with tons of sentries, and tons of sentries isn't the type of strategy I would expect to see down here in, in Gold League because. Uh, Guardian Shield and, and Force Fields are awesome, but it's really hard to use a huge, large, high sentry count army to to kill a marine tank push, you know? It's possible, and you'll see Grandmasters doing it all day, but it, it's, it's really hard, so I wouldn't expect to see this be very successful against your tanks, especially. <coughs> so it looks like this is three gate pressure, this is not a real attack, this is like a pretend attack. Um, at 8 minutes we're going to want 29 because you've lost one worker. 
hate how the phone always rings and it's never for me. Really, really annoying. Not using any of your gas, not using any of your buildings. This is kind of weird. What, what's with the turret? I guess you expected void rays for no obvious reason. You're just like, you know what I hate is void rays. So you get a viking that you're not going to need and you get a turret that you're not going to need. You didn't scout a starport. All you scouted was double gas and three three gateways and I guess you were saying the most common high gas strategy that I face that scares me is void rays. So I'm going to build two turrets expecting void rays. This is really bad because an engineering bay and two turrets, man. That's like a uh, 350 and this viking is another 100 and 250 that's you've got you spent like 600 bucks on on stuff that you just don't need at all good job with the banshee <laughs> all right so he's gonna hit you you're gonna have a completely useless viking two completely useless turrets a completely useless engineering bay two tanks and some some infantry so this is basically a 10 minute army and look how small your army is this is really bad I'm sure you're going to survive this, but it doesn't matter. Um, you're not mining at all. You pulled all your workers to defend against this. And look how crappy and small his army is, too. This is not a scary army. You didn't need to pull that many workers. I mean, it's it's tempting to say better safe than sorry, but I, I would never pull more than 16 workers, and I would probably only pull, like, let's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 would be good in this scenario because you can't fit more than 12 to repair anyway. So Banshee's doing some damage. The bunker's definitely going to die from the high sentry count, but it doesn't matter because with all these tanks, he can't do damage to you. Um, so he's not even really trying. This is, this is again, this is 3-gate. This is not a real attack. This is, uh, let's see if I can convince him to pull all his workers off of mining. Ha 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 ha. So this went really heavily in his favor. I know you felt like in, in the email you sent me, you're like, look, I defended his first attack and I did a bunch of damage with my Banshee. And so this went really well. This did not go really well. You were forced to make a Viking and two turrets for no, and an engineering bay for no reason. You pulled all your workers off mining for a long time. Your army size at 10 minutes is abysmal. Um, yeah, this was, this was bad. You need to get comfortable defending against a void ray push without making any turrets and without making a bike. And I know that sounds silly, but if you have um, eight marines per void ray and you s put them in a line, oh no, whiskey, whiskey, oh yeah, got it, got it, that was cool. Um, then the void ray will lose all its shield before it kills a marine. And you can do that all day. And then you're producing two marines at a time where he's producing one, one void ray every so, so often. And that'll buy you plenty of time to, uh, to get your, your viking out. Plus you'll already have the, the banshee that you, you made first. Or the medevac, which would be even better against void rays. And uh, yeah, so you shouldn't really be in any risk of dying that way. So, so far we're at... 12 minutes and you still haven't hit the 10 minute benchmark. Your supply blocked. Uh, you've got banshees and tanks and marines. I mean, your composition is good, but you haven't been using the buildings that you have, so your money is piled up and there's no way to spend it now. You're never going to catch up on this detriment that you've gotten into. Um, so at this point, I think you should just never get into this point. You know, you should never get here where you have it looks like including the queued up units you have like 1200 minerals that you just can't spend um, but if you ever do find yourself here throw down three racks get reactor cores on them and then in four minutes you'll have caught up on minerals it's not a good option you know uh, so another option would be to pull all of your mining workers because you don't need more minerals so you can pull extra workers because you just got this pool of minerals that's that's permanently high um, so that's that's kind of good. I I feel like when you know that you're having trouble spending your money, there's no excuse for ever having idle buildings. You know, um, you're not dropping mules, and you're not using these buildings. The thing is, one racks with a reactor core is 250 minerals per minute of marine production. So you're counting on another 150 here and another 150 here, in order to spend your total of 750 minerals per minute. And uh, 
if if you let these buildings go idle, then not only does your gas pile up, which is what you expect, but also your minerals get pretty high. Really nice. So at this point, your army size is abysmal, ridiculously small relative to what it should be, but it's pretty big compared to the toss because he had some problems too. Uh, but you're still gonna lose the fight, it looks like. And what else did you spend money on? I guess by pulling all those workers off, that's that's how you decided to eat into your eat into your mineral pile. See, instead of a thousand income, you've got seven hundred. You're not dropping mules again. This is a big deal. You should get uh, uh an you should make an MP3 that just says mule uh, every fifty in-game seconds, and then let that play because there's never a reason not to drop a mule uh, unless you're saving up a scan, which is very very uncommon. So just have that go off every 50 in-game seconds. It just says mule, 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 and then you can go back and drop a mule. And if you hear it and say, I can't go drop a mule right now, then at least it'll be in your mind. And when you can go drop a mule, you'll go drop two or whatever. But uh, letting your energy get this high, this is uh, three, six, um, nine, twelve. This is 1,200 minerals just sitting in your command center doing nothing. Uh, actually, it's 1,500, including the supply drop. Um, so yeah, th there was a lot of waste. There was a lot of waste in this game, and he's had an expo for so long, and he's getting a third. This is where it really falls apart. You don't want to be trying to catch up from this point. The game is over. So what you want to do uh, when you fail that first attack, right? If this attack dies, you've got like an 80% chance you're going to lose. That's fine, but. The best percentage chance of winning from this point, even though you're very unlikely to win, is not to throw down your own expo and try to compete in a long game where you have half the worker count and a big, big uh, army loss and, and so on and so forth. It's another all-in. Uh, and I know that sounds silly because his army is going to be even bigger next time, right? Well, not necessarily. A lot of times when a Protoss crushes your first attack, if you look at his production menu, he's not going to be making troops. He's going to be ma chrono boosting out workers as fast as he can, throwing down another nexus, getting observers. Um, so even though he's making sporadic troops, his money's climbing up because he knows he doesn't really need to spam out a ton of zealots. He's got plenty of army. So his army size isn't growing after that big fight. So salvage the bunker, uh, produce everything you can off of the buildings that you have, and then as soon as your money hits zero, go again. Pull all your SCVs this time and go again. And if you kill him, you know, awesome. And if you don't, then just leave. Because there's no way you're going to win a long game after losing it all in at the beginning. It's just not going to happen. Dunno, more Banshee harass, kind of neat. But none of this is going to matter. I mean, look at the spending. Bloop, bloop, no spending because he didn't all in. At this point in the game, nothing would happen to the man. Plus, at that, th doing that, moving in on his third like that, that's trading army for, for econ, and he has so much econ that he's glad to trade it. So I'd never trade army for econ. Uh, oops, sorry. So, most important things. First, uh, you missed a worker. Your orbital was too early, so you missed a worker. Um, second, right here, your first building, your, the first thing you make out of your starport should either be a medevac or a banshee. Um, a banshee can do counter, uh, it can do pinning things. So if you take the banshee over to his mineral line, he's going to warp in two stalkers and then you run the banshee away and now he has to leave two stalkers in his mineral line for the rest of the game. And so he's not going to feel comfortable attacking you because he's got two stalkers in his mineral line. And that's two stalkers he doesn't have with the attack. So even if he's doing a void ray rush, if you go Banshee first and you bring the Banshee all the way over to his main, now the void ray that would otherwise be hitting you has to chase a, void, has to chase a Banshee. And Banshees are faster or maybe the same speed. So it's not going to die. And uh, so, yeah, you, and you don't need to use the Banshee aggressively. You don't need to get in there and try to get probe kills. You just need to show it to him and then let him see it out of range of any stalkers next to his base and periodically move it over, shoot at the pylon once and move back. Don't try to do damage. Just use it as a pinning unit. Now he can't attack you because there's a Banshee outside of his base. That's that's what the, the quick starport means. It means that if you get that Banshee out, now suddenly he can't attack you. Uh, never get a Viking first unless you've actually seen an actual starport. Never make turrets even if you see a starport because turrets are crap. Uh, Voiders have a six range, turrets have a seven range. 
Um, that means that a turret can kill the depot standing next to the... I mean, a uh, voidrate can kill the depot standing next to the turret. The turret doesn't protect anything at all. It's completely useless against long-range air units. So turrets are crap against banshees. Turrets are crap against void rays. The only way you can make a turret work is if you line your entire base with them. And even then, because void rays regenerate their shields, he can walk in, hit the turret, hit the turret, hit the turret. When his shields get low, walk away, and then come back and do it again. Um... So just never make turrets uh, against Protoss unless you've seen DTs, and then only make one. Uh, turrets turrets require you to get the eBay, which you're not going to use for upgrades, so it's just a complete waste of money. And they don't do anything. They're not helpful. They're not useful. Don't make turrets. Don't make engineering bays. It's totally fine. Um, especially if you go 111 and you have a quick tech lab, if you're afraid of DTs, get a Raven. Get two Ravens. Heck, Ravens are awesome um because of pdd against stalkers uh so yeah don't get turrets that was bad also eight minutes you want 30 workers i think it's pretty safe to say that this uh you were short one because you were short one at six minutes so you actually kept up on workers the whole game and you're still short one because you were short one before so this is actually great uh to be a short or only one worker that's that's totally fine i'm fine with that uh, good job on workers, but now you're going to stop. See, I, I noticed that you were behind on workers at 8.30, so I assumed it was because you were short at 8, but no, you're short from 8 to 9. It's going to be a full minute where you're not going to produce workers. Actually, probably 30 seconds, 35 seconds. That's two workers. Uh, it's really important not to do that. Uh, and you should feel really comfortable queuing up a crap ton of workers, because uh, they'll eventually finish, so that money isn't wasted. It's just borrowed. Um, never never cut workers in order to make marines. Never cut workers in order to make anything. Just don't cut workers for any reason until after 8 minutes. So I'm kind of okay with the fact that you cut workers at after 8 minutes because you were already max saturation, so I don't mind that at all. Uh, if you were consciously cutting workers, then that's fine. That was even probably a smart or a good move. But if you did it by accident, it's something to, it's something to keep track of. Don't, don't accidentally cut workers for any reason. Mules, big problem. Uh, don't let your mule energy get high like this. Uh, and pulling all those workers, that's silly. At the very beginning of the game, hotkey six workers like this to number two. And then if he attacks you, hit number two and go over here and repair the bunker. You never want to pull all your SCVs unless you're really desperate, unless you're, you're about to lose the game, you know? Um... And I, I don't think you were in any danger. This wasn't a real attack. This was a three gate. And it's it's you got to get good at judging how scary an attack is. If the attack consists of mostly sentries, it's not scary, especially if you have a wall. In it. Sentry zealot is only good if they if you're attacking him through a choke, and then he force fields behind you and crushes you with the zealots. But if he's walking through your choke, his zealots don't get to do anything. His sentries are terrible. They're casters. They're not really meant to do damage. And his stalkers are, are terrible because stalkers are always terrible. So that's not a scary push. If there were two immortals with it, if there was two void ways raised with it, I'd be more scared. But, uh, yeah, when you see only gateway units, don't be scared. Um, so the, the push, like the official push is 10 minutes uh, 90 unit space. You had 10 minutes 62 unit space. Like, you should be able to tell this is really bad. Really bad. And that all just comes from the turrets and pulling workers. Uh, also, when you pulled workers and you were, you were panicking, right? You're on defense. And your immediate response is to cut your income and not spend any money. This is the absolute opposite of the response you should have. When you see an attack that's coming that might kill you, the most important thing is whether or not you have reinforcements coming, right? Because if this attack is stronger than you think it is, like you seem to have thought it was, and it kills your whole army, if you have reinforcements coming, you might not die. If you've got nothing coming, you're doomed. Also, these guys back here are silly. Rally them to the front of your base. Uh, so you've got a lot of the... very. You have a very small army, and of that very small army, a very small amount of it is actually in place to fight. Uh, also, once you get to about 10 minutes, you should have an excess of minerals, especially if you drop your mules. Uh, so just always keep four marines queued up, maybe six. Um, you're never gonna you're never gonna need those minerals for anything else. And as soon as you pull guys off of mining, your your mineral excess is gonna drop back down. 
So until that point, it's okay to, to build up a stockpile of minerals that you later, later will spend on offensive bunkers and just the fact that your income is lower. Uh, so just really make sure not to let these production facilities go idle. It's okay for your for your factory to go idle for a second, but your your starport should never be idle even for a second. Your racks should never be idle. Um, and that was cute. I liked that. So yeah. Uh, you mentioned in your note that positioning was bad in the in the army versus army battle, but I don't feel like that had anything to do with anything. I think you lost this game long before this because you have a hundred unit space at fourteen minutes. This is a tiny army. Look, tiny econ spending, tiny technology spending, tiny army spending. If you won this game, it would be a miracle. Doesn't matter how good your positioning is in this battle; it's completely irrelevant. You'd already lost this game by this point. Uh, and that comes down to you always need to attack a toss three minutes after his expo goes up. And most pro tosses will put up their expo uh, at either four, five, six, or seven minutes. So that means ten minutes is the absolute latest you should ever be attacking a pro toss. Uh, so waiting till 14 minutes is just like giving up the game. There's no way to win if you wait until. Um, what is that? That's 10 minutes, 8 minutes after his expo. He's so far ahead by that point. It's just completely un unreasonable. You, you wouldn't be able to win. So even if you thought he was one basing, which you probably did, even if you thought he was doing a one base void ray all in, a one base Terran that spends his money efficiently can beat a one base Protoss, especially if he's going for a void ray all in, or a gateway all in, or an immortal all in. Um, your Terran army is just stronger, man. Just uh, wait until 9 minutes. And then if he if he hasn't attacked you, push out. And if he has attacked you, defend against it. And then immediately push out, man. Don't don't hide from him. Just because he's being aggressive doesn't mean that you should be defensive. Uh, you can win out in the open, even though you have an advantage up here. You can still win down there. Uh, and that's only true once you start getting up close to ten minutes. Like if he attacks you at six minutes, don't go push back at six minutes, man. Wait until your your big sweet spot, your ten minute push, because uh, you need to have enough workers so that you can leave twenty two behind when you push out. And, uh, yeah. So this was pretty bad. I feel like you'd benefit... Uh, I, I feel like this is a confidence thing. I feel like you're afraid of a Void Ray push. And I feel like you'd benefit from, from practicing against some Void Ray pushes. So anytime you want, just ping me and, and I'll, I'll do some Void Ray pushes against you. And you can practice defending against them. It should be really easy to defend against a Void Ray push without turrets. And that is all I have to say, yo. Even though I repeat myself over and over, hopefully the message got across. Bye.